Hi everyone, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm not sure I'm excited to share the information in this video with you, but many, many, many of you have been asking in the comment section to tell you about how I'm coming with a carnivore diet. For those of you who follow my channel, you know that maybe about five months ago, I had terrible IBS and I decided to go on the carnivore diet, which is basically a super low carb diet of really only meat and in my case, cheese. I'm able to have dairy. So I do have cheese and meat on my version of the carnivore diet. And I did that religiously for three months. For 90 days, I did not veer off once. I never had any cakes, pies, cookies, ice cream, potato chips, none of that. Well, then I had my hip replacement maybe about two months ago. And from that point on, quite honestly, it has been difficult in terms of my diet. And I will be explaining that to you in this video. And it's a very chatty video because quite honestly, when I watch carnivore videos, there's usually some definitive point. Like basically it is, I've done it, I'm perfect on it, I never veer off and look at all the benefits I have. I'm gonna live happily ever after just chomping into a big steak every night and maybe eating a few McDonald's hamburgers. Well, if you want that kind of a video, that is not this kind of a video. And in fact, that's why I've put this off so long because basically I've been struggling a lot. And so I will tell you honestly where I am right now and maybe where I hope to be. But before I get into that, I did want to show you the outfit that I'm wearing today. This is a wonderful Amazon tank and I have this in about five or six or seven colors. I've had these shirts for maybe a year, year and a half. They've gone in the wash. I always hang them dry, but they still look great. Absolutely love them. And on the bottom half, I'm wearing some jeans from Walmart and they are wonderful. I love them. They're Sophia Vergara flare leg jeans and they are very long. And a lot of the jeans and trousers we have lately are super long. And I wish I had the pair of shoes to show you, but I will put a picture there or there. I absolutely love these dream pair of shoes that I'm wearing with these jeans because they have a high enough chunky heel that they're comfortable and they do get those jeans and trousers up off the floor, which is just wonderful. And if you're not yet a subscriber to 50 Plus Beauty, I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell, it's totally free. And if you could give this video a thumbs up, that would help it in the YouTube algorithm, which I would really appreciate. And getting back to my hip replacement two months ago, by the way, I can totally walk now. I have no pain. I absolutely feel like I never even had a hip problem. And for the at least year leading up to that hip replacement, I could hardly walk downstairs. So it had gotten really bad. So I'm very, very happy about that. But one thing that did happen during the hip replacement, and I do have a great video. It's one of my best videos ever about my process going through that hip replacement recovery. And I'll link that video below. But one thing that happened during my recovery is the second day I got home from the hospital, I developed COVID. And I didn't know it at first, but all of a sudden, all that meat I was eating tasted absolutely terrible. Like terrible. I could not face another McDonald's hamburger, a ribeye steak, anything meat related just kind of turned my stomach. And so during that period where I had COVID and I was also healing from my knee replacement, I went out to Trader Joe's with Alan and got a bunch of gluten-free grains, basically. Muffins, pancake mix, tomato soup, that's not really a grain, but basically a lot of things that were not carnivore because I just could not stand eating meat. And that does tend to happen with many people on COVID. Their taste buds kind of change during that period and things they used to love, they can't stand. And that's exactly what happened to me. And unfortunately, during that period where I went on all the gluten-free grains and I was, I was eating cinnamon muffins and stuff like that, my IBS came back with a vengeance and I realized that I really couldn't have those grains. And so I tried to slide into something that was more keto-like with the idea that I would have less meat because I really couldn't stand it at the time and maybe add in salads and that kind of thing. And I also want to preface this whole thing by saying that in the first 90 days of my carnivore eating plan, where I was not veering off, unfortunately, I lost way too much weight. At my perfect weight, I'm in a window between 118 and 120. But after three months of the carnivore, I was getting down 113, 114. I was looking like this. My body looked kind of like a skeleton and my face looked worse and very hangy. So like a lot of carnivore women do, I started eating a lot, lot, lot of butter. 
I would melt it in my coffee in the morning, have a tablespoon or two there. I would put butter on all my steaks, my hamburgers. I was eating tons of butter. Well, unfortunately, even with all the butter, I didn't gain any weight. So I was still a really puny, ugly looking carnivore. And all that fat on many days gave me the IBS back. So I had none of the benefits of carnivore and I was looking terrible like a scarecrow. And so fast forward until after the hip replacement and I was always planning to go back on carnivore but from that point on that I'd lost my taste for the meat, I also had the problem that all of a sudden on carnivore, I felt very deprived. I felt like the food was boring. And so what I decided to do is to give myself some treats. And so I started drinking Diet Dr. Peppers again. And for those of you who follow my channel, you know I can't just have one or two Diet Dr. Peppers a week. When I start that, I am off to the races and I'm drinking four and five and six you know, Diet Dr. Peppers, Diet Root Beers. In fact, I bought a bunch of two liters of Diet Root Beer and I was swilling them at home. And with the idea of thinking in terms of with my choices, the, the phrase, my future self will thank me, I knew my future self in 20 years was not going to thank me for throwing all this chemical stuff, all these diet drinks into my body. So I knew that had to stop. And the problem with all that artificial sweetener is it keeps your taste for sweet things and highly processed carbs alive. And so the carnivore became boring to me and a struggle and I was cheating a lot. Fast forward to about two weeks ago, I finally decided I had to get rid of the diet pop. I just can't handle it. So two weeks ago was my last Diet Dr. Pepper, one day at a time, and I'm so happy about that. And when I quit the Diet Dr. Pepper, it seemed like I didn't have quite as many cravings for the junk food, the cakes, pies, and cookies, that kind of thing. And one more thing that I do want to tell you that I thought was really interesting about when I was very, very, very sloppy on the carnivore diet. In fact, when I was binging out on some cookies, you know, Alan has these cookies and I found I could eat them without getting IBS. And so I was doing that. I was just not being good at all. And I know all you guys think I'm so disciplined. I am disciplined, but when it comes to something that I can get addicted to, all bets are off and it's very, very tough for me. But anyway, what I noticed in some of my videos was I was starting to get very puffy, very jowly. I was just not looking very good. And I thought, why am I looking so bad? And I realized it was because I was really veering off the carnivore diet because the carnivore diet is very anti-inflammatory. And in fact, really, that is one of the main reasons, in addition to the IBS, that I went on the carnivore diet. And let me show you the before and after picture. I did a video about how I look when I'm really indulging in those processed carbs versus how I looked after my first month on the carnivore diet. And it is a marked change. And you know, sometimes I forget that. And right now, in thinking of that is giving me a new resolve to really get back on the carnivore diet and be disciplined about it on a daily basis. And for me, that means one day at a time, only eating carnivore. And I will say that during part of the carnivore, when I was being really messy, I would have ketchup on my burgers, which is sugars. And so that was keeping my hunger for junky junk foods and carbs, processed carbs alive. And I will say that at several points along the way, I totally quit the carnivore diet. And each time I did, my IBS came back really horribly but I do have a disadvantage, I think, is that sometimes when I'm on the carnivore diet, I can cheat once or twice and I don't seem to have a problem. But IBS is tricky that way. You never really know. Something that didn't give you a problem two days ago, you know, could give you a problem today. So any of you who are on the carnivore diet out there, if you could let me know your experience in the comment section, I would really appreciate that. Are you able to be 100% disciplined on that diet? Or do you have the occasional cheat day? Also, are you losing too much weight? I had a wonderful comment, which was kind of sad, from one of my lovely viewers, and she said she lost like 20 pounds and she had no weight to lose. She looked absolutely terrible, and she ended up having to quit the carnivore diet because she really needed to gain that weight back. And to do that, she needed to go higher carb. And if you've had a problem like that and found any way to deal with the problem of losing too much weight on the carnivore diet, getting bored on the diet, or if you sometimes cheat, like you give yourself a meal or two a week of actually eating carbs. I am really curious about how many of you are handling these issues because they have been very difficult for me. And I will say that going forward, I'm going to take this one day at a time. And just for today, I'm going to stay rigidly carnivore because I really do love the anti-inflammatory benefits of the diet. Well, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day. And I have been reading this wonderful book, The Golden Key and 22 Additional Essays. This is from a man named Emmett Fox, who was big. He's now passed on. 
but he was a big Christian faith person, I guess, in the 20s and 30s, and he wrote many essays, and this one is on faith, and I thought it was really good. And it starts with a Bible verse, Matthew 21, 21, and even if you're not Christian, I think this message can bring you something positive. And the verse is, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And again, that was Matthew 21, 21. And then he goes on to say, And understanding faith is the life of prayer. It is a great mistake, however, to struggle to produce a lively faith within yourself. So you don't struggle to produce that faith. That can only end up in failure. The thing to do is to act as if you had faith. What we voluntarily do will always be the expression of our true belief. Act out the part that you wish to demonstrate, and you will be expressing true faith. Act as though I were, and it will be, says the Bible, in effect. This is the right use of the will, scientifically understood. And I absolutely love that, and I think it is so true. And I really liked what the reading said that if you want to be a faith-filled person, you can't just say, you know, make me a faith-filled person. You have to forget all that and start by saying, what would a faith-filled person do in this situation? And then do that. Act as if you have faith and you will have faith. And maybe what Emmett Fox said in that reading could help me with the struggles I'm having on the carnivore diet. How would I do that? Act as if I really love this eating plan. Act as if the food is wonderful. Act as if it is very easy for me to continue this. Act as if I'm getting all these health benefits from it. Because really when I am on that carnivore diet, the level of inflammation in my body is greatly reduced. I don't have the joint pain. I look better. Even my eyelashes and eyebrows grew out much more. And again, I'll link that video for you below about that. And so friends, just for today, with regard to the things we want in our life, let's stop struggling and struggling and trying to have faith. Let's just act as if we already have them and be thankful and watch the good things flow in. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.